Haggis! It's Haggis time! So this is PT Carroll for MMA On Point and I'm with Paul Bairdew Craig and we're going to attack Haggis, a Scottish delicacy which is the organs of a sheep ground up into a lovely little meze and we're going to really enjoy ourselves. You ready for this Paul? Are you ready kids? What you've done there is you've sold it to the fans, so now they're thinking, Ooh, a meze! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is, that, is that Haggis? Where can, where, where can I purchase such a delicacy? <laughs> Yay, haggis! Is this the hackiest thing we could have done? Like, I mean, this is stereotypical straight out the case. No, we could have been sitting in kilts and we could have had war paint on and we could have been going, Aye! Just eating haggis! Funny story, actually. We tried to get a kilt, but I'm too fat to fit into it. <laughs> did you? It did wouldn't you, go around just, me waist. Did you totally got many stuff? <laughs> yeah. That is lovely. That is good, isn't that it? That is fabulous. What you want is you want a wee bit of jalapeno, right? You want a wee bit of cheese. Get, dig deep. That's where the good stuff is. Oh, yes. Yes. Is it one of those things, though? Like say I'm Irish, everyone's like, Guinness, Guinness, Guinness. Is it one of those things when you go around the world, they ask about haggis? It is. Because as, as you said, it's, it's made from the animals of an animal. It's like all the stuff that they do, probably wouldn't eat. Oh, like the brown meat. Do you like the brown meat? I, I like the stuff. brown meat. We need something to wash this down with, don't we lads? Oh, oh wow. A couple of bottles of Iron Brew. It's him again. <laughs> <laughs> now we're descending into the point of, um, Proper stereotypical. But what is it? What is it about iron brew? Every like I've been hearing about this since I'm a kid. They had it in Ireland for a little while. Everybody was freaking out. They loved it, and then it kind of disappeared, and now it's back again. But what what is the iron brew story? So I don't actually actually know what the taste is, but it's the only there's only one place in the world where Coca Cola does not outsell, and it's, it's Scotland. Iron brew sells more than Coca Cola. Coca Cola is worldwide, and it's the number one selling drink apart from in Scotland, where it's iron brew. Iron Brew is a soft drink for hard men. Don't drink more than 80 gallons a day or you'll rust. Bars Iron Brew, made in Scotland from gutters. I can't even you, you yeah. open that, you're strong. If you drank out, uh... <laughs> <laughs> See, you know you're putting me under pressure? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So interesting. What a so, beautiful culture. So we had, um, <laughs> so we had uh, It's kind of like a cream soda. Kind of. No? I don't know. It's like pure sugar. Diabetes in a bottle. I'm going to... Uh, this is a good video. You're going to have a measles. Like mmm. Cucumbers. <laughs> it is very nice. This is very buttery. There's like a, a very sweet element to this one or something. I don't know. And this is obviously a crepe. I didn't even know what it was, so well done. Is that a hollandaise sauce or something? I don't know. That's the guy. That's the winner there. That's we the can guy. do a switcheroo. You can work away on this one and I'll get into the naturals. We're, we're very, very similar with regards to Scotland and uh, Ireland. We're very, very oh, similar. Yeah. We're very, very close. We grew up with like, roughly the same morals in life. Uh, you know, the old meeting, you would have meat with your dinner and some veg and that was it, that was your dinner. Yeah. And like, a wee bit of potato and a wee this bit of This is very chicken, fancy, let's be honest. I know, this is, this is fancy, <laughs> growing up. Do you, I said this to you before we were recording. Have you ever noticed someone's like demeanor change from when you're Paul Craig and then you're Paul Craig? With the My demeanor changes, I, I feel passionate. I, I love Scotland, I love everything about Scotland. I know people are like, it's quite hacky and you can be like, oh, just leaning in your Scottish heritage. But I love Scotland and I love absolutely everything about it. I love haggis, I love wearing my face paint, I love iron brew, I love everything about it. You are sporting the traditional Scottish kilt. What is under? Yes, please. You want to see? It's yes. my, it's my, it's my... Your kibbles and bits? It's my, it's my cock. I remember as a wee boy, my gran used to drink this with vodka. Really? That, yeah. was a, that was our drink. Man, that's a combination. That was our drink and then our diabetes kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> Because she was drinking that with straight vodka. And then, once your old grand had the, the vodka with the iron brew, guess who got the rami? <laughs> That's what you used to call them, rammies. Does everyone know you used to be a school teacher? Because when you talk to you, you're a lovely lad, no doubt about it. But yep. if I was to just see you, face paint on, staring down a guy, I'd say, that guy, I'm going to stay away from him. He's yep. terrifying. I think when you look at fighters, you want them to be this big brute, don't you? Because that, that's what sells, isn't it? Just wild men were in an octagon. But no, I, I, was, a, I was a teacher for seven years. I uh, loved every day. And that's why I loved my job so much, was because no two days were the same. Like, I would go in one day and it'd be different for the next day. And that's the kind of guy I'm in. That's why I enjoy training. 
because no two days are the same. I mix up everything for Jiu Jitsu. There's all this stuff that goes along with it. There's all the manipulation of joints. There's a manipulation of trying to shut off somebody's windpipe, trying to snap somebody's ligaments in their leg. That speak, spoke to me, and I remember going in um, to my first session in the Scottish Hit Squad. And my mate had been going to this class, and he put me in this move, and I couldn't do anything about it. And we used to wrestle, we used to like, ah, you know, roughhouse, way, yeah, we scamp. And he put me in this move, and I couldn't do anything about it. I was like, man, he's like, just tap me. I'm like, how are you talking about? Just tap. I had no idea what he was doing to me, right? And I had no idea what tap was. And he's like, just tap. Just, just tap, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And the first move that I learned was a Kimura, right? And that was, it was a Kimura trap. It was like, lean in, grab the Kimura, pull the arm back. Now, see that night, I knew everybody with that move. Well, dun, 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 dun. didn't know anything about it, but I just knew the, the steps. Like, bum, 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 bum. Oh, he does this, I'll do this. And he showed me like a few variations. This is my coach, Brian, first time I'd met him. And at that point, I knew, wow, this is for me. And then my boxing coach then turned out to be Lawrence Murphy, who was like a WBA welterweight champion of the world at one point. And then from learning that, there was an opportunity, and uh, they invite me to do a, a, an MMA fight down in the Stadium of Light, Total Combat, the very first time I'd ever fought. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm broken back on my game. <laughs> I then went into this fight and it was in the stadium of light, I'll never forget it, the, the, the octagon was like perched up on the side of the, the, the stand, it was amazing. Sounds crazy. It was brilliant. Same, it looked like Sunderland. Like. Sunderland, I know, and I know, and I remember just going out, had known nothing about striking and uh, just grabbed this guy and judo threw him and fell on his guard and then dislocated his shoulder, popped that sucker right. Come on. <laughs> Uh, it was like a, it was a Kimura, but from side control. Uh, popped this guy's shoulder. I'm like, yeah, feeling like the man. I remember going back down, and then the promoter comes in. And he's like, uh, all right, all right, Paul. And I'm like, all right. And he's like, uh, you can't go outside. And I was like, how on? He's like, yeah, all his team's waiting outside for you. Oh and I was like, God. I was like, well, I was like, I'm just beat him. I'm sure I can beat his team. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out we ended up, we ended up having to like wait an hour in this uh, venue um, because the. The guys' team were waiting outside for us. I was just trying to get as much experience as I can. I was enjoying the, the thrill of beating people. And then I got too big for my boots. And uh, my coach, I remember thinking, I should have got my purple belt. I'm smashing all these purple belts. And, and I've not got my purple belt. And I remember this was a big thing to me. And he humbled me that day. Because I was like, I'm the man. And I remember we went to a grade and I didn't get the belt. And he, he put me in an armband and just bump, just arm barred me, popped my, my, my arm, didn't he do any massive damage, just humbled me like, listen, and he's like, you okay man? He's because he gets a like, American accent, you okay man? And I was like, what? <laughs> and I remember that humbled me, and then for that point I realised, you know nothing about Jiu Jitsu. Still being a teacher at this point, still working my ass off to get to be a teacher. And the only time my coach phones me at night is if something bad's happened, and um, my phones me up and he's like, Paul, I said, what is it? And he said, you've just been offered to fight in the UFC. And I said, you're at it. And he said, no, but. And I said, but what? And he says, you're still under contract with Bama. And I said, oh no, we're never going to get a contract with Bama. And he says, listen, just message him and speak to him. I think they'll be fine with you. Phone them up, speak to them. Absolutely brand new ways. And they let us go. They're like, no, no, listen, Paul. Like, you've done what you can with your sport. Like, we want you, we want the best for you and that. Like, for that, I love Bama, because he could have just been, they could have, they could have yeah, done the heels in and went, no, yeah, you stole us a fight, you stole us a Chris Fields fight. And then I get that opportunity, and that, the reason I was laughing was because my coach was like, he's he's a coach, MMA, he's good at, media, he's absolutely tosh it. He's like to me, you know what you should do? Because the, the guy I was fighting was Henrique De Selva, and he used to call him Frankenstein. So he's like, you know what you should do? Get a wee bit of love for the social media. Do your face up green and uh, call him out. So I'd done my face up green, right? Dressed up as like Frankenstein. Happy Halloween for the bear, Jew. Dressed up is the guy I'm going to beat come the 17th of December. Happy Halloween, Frankenstein. And like, tried to cut this shitty promo and I was like, nah, that's never coming out again. And I remember washing off my face and was like, because it's not me, that's not the type of guy I'm, right? I like wearing like makeup, but that's only on a Saturday night. So I uh, took this makeup off and uh, never done that again. <laughs> but I remember just thinking to myself, like, standing in my kitchen, trying to make this video to try and get a wee bit of press out there. Final question about the teaching. Like, I mean, as you're saying, you're in full on huge fights at the time, they were huge. The Moore fight was huge in Ireland, massive. Do you ever come in banged up and like, 
parents or principals have an issue with you? And that was that exactly happened. I remember I came in and I had a limp. Um, I'd thought somebody and they'd calf kick me, like before calf kicks were a thing. Yeah. And he just, uh, I didn't mean to do it, but I couldn't walk on it, I couldn't put pressure. And the head teacher seen me and he pulled me into the office and they're saying like, um, we're aware you're fighting. And I says, well, what I do in my spare time does not, like, it doesn't affect my teaching in any bit. Well, what you're doing is you're promoting uh, violence to, to kids. And then at that point I was like, listen, we need to end this conversation here. If you don't know anything about the sport and you're saying it's a very violent sport, then you know nothing about it. So I'm going to end this conversation here and we can we can set up a meeting. You wouldn't badmouth boxing and say, no, it's brutal. Two guys punching each other. Mm. Karate, two guys kicking and punching each other. I'm like, all MMA is doing is bringing all the sports together to make one sport. And then from that point, they were like, right, we're behind you, Paul. I remember I signed that contract for the UFC and I had to go in and tell my work. I remember having to go in and saying, listen, I need to have a week off. And they're like, well, you know, it's a really busy time, um, you really need to be in the class, and it happened to me all day. It just put so many roadblocks in front of me to try and get it. And I remember thinking, like, no, 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 it's only, it's only like five days. Like, I'll, I'll come in and do Mondays and I'll leave the Tuesday, so it'll be four days, and then I'll be back on Monday morning. And they're like, right, um, right, that's fine. And I remember I came in and done my shift on the Monday, done my class on the Monday, and I was buzzing out my tree, man, and they kids learned shit all that day. <laughs> they literally just spoke to me about UFC and all this kind of stuff. And I was excited to tell them this kind of stuff. And they were excited and interested to know about it. Because they'd, these kids had seen my progress within like a year, two years. I go out doing my stuff out in uh, California and I'm rushing back to come back. And I remember I was so jet lagged. And it's, it's like I get back Sunday night. I had to go to my bed, literally see my family for like half an hour. And then I'm back up in the morning, like, oh, oh, get in. And it's amazing. And I remember walking in, and it was just a buzz. It was amazing. Like, were you all shouting on you? People Clapping. were like, yeah. Oh, and I remember wow. there was just kids all side, outside my classroom. I remember just kind of sitting. And I'm, and I'm absolutely bust at this point. I remember just sitting in, the head teacher comes in who gave me shit prior to this. was like, you're going to have to uh, let all the kids in. I'm talking like there was probably about 100 kids outside my classroom. You're going to have to let them in and talk to them. Then were offered the fight against Tyson Pedro, who had beat Khalil Round. Yeah, it was a rapid jump, right? I can right. remember going like, Whoa, like, because Pedro was like, they were really pushing him and all them Australian fights. Yeah. So he was like, he was the face they attached to the nation. Yeah. And then all of the, like, one, one one went in, and it's like, all right, here right. we go. At that point, I was like, right, I need to up my training because we're now in the UFC. Now things start to wrap up. We need to ramp this up. So I was just lifting stupid weights, not doing the right stuff, training like three times a day, just absolutely tearing my body to shreds. And I'm not saying that's the reason I lost it. I done, I made massive mistakes. Fame got to me, man. Like the, I was like, I'm the guy, I'm, I'm the big cheese. And um, and then after that, I then go to Glasgow, and then from Glasgow, I then get knocked out in my hometown. So I'm on two losses and when I skid. It must have been hard though because you were so hyped going into that. You were like the face of Scottish MMA because Jojo had moved. You come in against Khalil. It was there that night. I was sitting right beside the Horrible, cage. Horrible, wasn't it, man? Yeah, but I mean, how do you, how do you that bet? That guy was angry as well, man. He is oh, one he's scary crazy. dude, man. He but, is one scary dude. But you, where you are now from where you were that night, I'd say you could never believe that you went from that knockout to, to Roundtree to be where you are now. But that needed to happen because as I said, I'd never been at the first round. And I'd been out the second round with Carol Moore. I'd never experienced adversity. I'd never experienced it. What did you think of the whole beef with Jamal? I have to ask you about it. It was captivating. He felt I was underhand to him by saying he pulled out the fight. But in my eyes, if you sign a contract and you can't make that date, you have to pull out. I wasn't being insulting to him, being like, ah, well, he's, he's got COVID. And, but ultimately, you never made the fight. You, I, I was ready. Ultimately, it worked out better for me because I'd totally got inside a doctor in my thigh and I had smashed up my wrists. So what he didn't know was we were going in, we were going into battle with, a, with like a broken wrist and like a torn adductor. And it was like two weeks before I meant to go out and I remember speaking to the physio and he's like, well, as long as you don't move side to side, you'll be fine. Jesus Christ. And we were like, no, no, we're, we're beating him. And then he then pulled out and my coach is like, blessing in disguise. And then it gave us another six months or three months, I think it was, to get even better. So I was, just, I was signing posters and it's like, maybe I signed like a couple hundred posters and he's like, who's your dealer? And I was like, what are you talking, what are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, you must be on something, you're going to beat me. And oh, then there was, this, oh, there was this altercation where it was like, and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck you up in a few days, man, don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden, 
MT, uh, MTV, MTV were not there, it was uh, UFC on Fox, I was like, what the wee guy, because the wee guy had literally been talking to me and he was like, yeah, are you going out for a coffee that, we can come along and get some footage and I was like, aye aye, next thing the camera's up and the guy's like, we guys this, and he's like, he's like, jackpot, if you genuinely believe that you're going to beat me, then just wait, it doesn't matter what you say right now, that's not going to affect me, and I could see it was in his head. But then, yeah, look, it's the most, mo how good does that feel when you've had an interaction with someone like that right. and then you destroy the guy the way you did, like... But then I, I could have been the guy and been like, hey, told you, you know. <laughs> I love the fact that the guy went out in the shield. The guy was oh, like, yeah. ah, fuck, I've, I've fucked it here. I've, I've literally been given it for six months. I've been pestering this guy on social media, but he's like, snap it. Snap that sucker. It was just like stones. <laughs> And I remember like looking at the referee, like his arms went and it's just back and floating about there. And the referee's like, cool, kill him. <laughs> I also respected the fact that he stood next to me and allowed me to get my hands raised with him there and he's like, I respect you too much, man, to, to let you stand there yourself. And I, so as soon as he came back through the hospital, man, I got, I got my whiskey and I said, one hell of an opponent, man, and we shared an experience. Big, big fight. It was, we were talking about Gustafsson at one stage, it's now Nikita Krylov. Like, I love the Gustafsson fight, but I also love the Krylov fight. I have so much respect for the guy, I've been watching him so long. He's a big name. What would this win mean to you, and how much of a challenge it is compared to the rest of the challenges in the UFC? See, I, see when you're saying how much of a challenge is this compared to the rest, they're all the same challenge to me. Krylov's one for the fans, man. I genuinely believe this is like a fan favorite fight. You like Paul, he's a wee bit exciting. You know you're going to get some really good jiu-jitsu. We cry love, you're going to get some wild kicks. Like his kicking game's pretty cool. He's off the docks. He's that weird striking where he's like karate kicking. He has heavy guy. hands, yeah. But I know he's I know he's not Russian, but my record against Russians is pretty good, man. Like, it I'm, is. I'm, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, like, 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 I'm, I'm just saying this, but I heard the, the, the kids in Dagestan call me the Dagestan or destroyer. The Dagestani destroyer. Oh my God. That's what they call me, like in the streets. They like, check under kids, their bed for Paul Craig and like, like the, <laughs> Daddy, is Bill Jew there? <laughs> no, Bill Jew. Dad's going to bed and the dad's like to the wife. Honey, is Bill Jew under bed? <laughs> no, Bill Jew. But, <laughs> What this means to my career is, I can hang with the big boys. Yes. That's what it means. You're right in the mix then. Like, like I'm in the mix, but to be in the mix with a hungry top 10 opponent is what I'm looking for. And this is what this is what I've got. Right, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough fight. It's a tough fight, as every fight is. But I'm going to be there, and I'm, I'm going to put on one hell of a performance, and people are going to remember it. Mark's out of town, the haggis. Uh, this guy is a guy, so it's like a crepe and haggis with some Very with some fancy, cheese. very fancy. That's the guy, it's just because it's just I've went big time now, you know. When I was a kid, I'd have eaten two of that haggis, and mm, this haggis is good, mother. <laughs> now I'm like, well, mum, is it, is it, is it a crepe? Is it a this is gentrified haggis. Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a thin pancake, mother? But no, uh, this guy wins probably like a straight up 10. My winner of the day is... The Iron Brew. Beautiful Iron Brew. Check it out, 1901, original. <laughs> but, uh, that's you sponsor. You sponsor. <laughs> that's everything we have for you, Paul. Thank you very Hi, much, my friend. Absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for your day. Love yous. <laughs>